Hi, welcome to this tutorial video. This is Amir for Cookie.com and today I'm going to walk you through the styling, setup and some of the features of the Cookie Muse blog, which is Cookie's new and fantastic autonomous blog system, developed exclusively as a widget for Adobe Muse. Now probably all widgets you know are so-called client-side scripts, meaning that they run only on the visitor's browser. Cookie Muse blog, on the other hand, is built also with a server-side part, which opens a whole new way to lots of amazing dynamic features, the most important of which is that this is a real blog system running on your own web host. It is not simply an iframe embedding an external blog website. Before we proceed with a detailed guide, let me briefly introduce the three steps in setting up and using the blog. First step. You either drag and drop the unstyled widget into your project, or you start with one of our sample designs and continue customizing from there. Either way, you'll have the main widgets for the blog and the optional category menu, and you'll have a template of the blog elements, which you can simply style in Muse. These blocks are filled with dummy text now, which only shows up here in Muse, but they will be automatically replaced by your blog contents on the website. We'll get into details later. Second step. You have your design ready and you have uploaded the site to your FTP host. When you open the page in the browser, if you're running the blog for the first time, a simple installation wizard appears. Here you can activate your product, configure the settings and create the first administrator or author account. We'll handle that in detail later. Third step. Your blog is ready and after you log into your blog editor, you can make your first category and start creating posts. Here you can simply write and format your text and upload images per drag and drop. Also the whole system is compatible with cell phones and other mobile devices. We will look into more features later in this video. I think the parameters of the main blog and the category menu widgets are mostly self-explanatory. In the first field, please attach the museblogmain.php file which comes with the widget. This is important. Then there are more fields regarding the spacings, styling of the comment input form, upload image quality and links, which again should be self-explanatory. As said, this is a template of the block elements and the text are just placeholders. You can style these elements by using the text and the color panels. Also you can add strokes and corner radius. To adjust the spacing between the elements, each of them has extra parameters for inner and outer spacing. The difference between inner and outer spacing is most intelligible when you add a background color to an element but in most cases there is no practical difference. Please note that the inner spacing can be simulated in Muse, while the outer spacing will be visible when you publish the website. The two container elements, posts and comments containers, do not have integrated spacing parameters. To add padding to them, use the spacing panel in Muse. As usual in Muse, we can style everything graphically as we see them right in the main window. But since the blog requires the server-side part of the widget to work on the server, we cannot use the Preview tab in Muse or view the exported files on the local computer to see the blog working. We would need to upload the files to our web server. So we will style the fields here in the main window and after uploading the site, if still there is any fine-tuning needed, we can come back and tweak the design and the spacing and re-upload everything as needed. We only have to set up the blog once and the online configurations will remain saved. Since the template elements which we see here will not be shown on our final website, there are a few hints to their styling. Moving and repositioning them will have no effect on the position of the corresponding elements on the blog. 
they still will show up in the standard order. We can adjust the height to determine the minimum height of the element in block, except for the multiline field, but changing the width will have no effect because the width is determined by the length of the respective text content. Please do not remove any of the template elements, even if you don't want them to show up on the block, because you would receive an error. If you don't use any tags, or if you disable the comments on the block, they won't show up anyway. You can turn off the words by, category and tags later online in the block settings. You can use the graphic styles blog show all and blog login on any element which you create to add a special function to these elements. Blog show all will show all posts and blog login is the button that brings up the login form. You can style and place them as you wish. You can, for instance, assign the blog show all to your logo or blog title. And regarding the login button, you could hide it or style it more neutrally if you don't want the people to see it. You could also have multiple instances of the blog on several pages and put the login button on only one private page. Anyway, the login functionality is very secure. Cookie MuseBlog will automatically block an account if a number of failed login attempts are registered in a certain time frame. The category menu is optional. You can remove it if you're not intending to have many categories. Again, there are some parameters on the widget menu with which you can style the mouse over colors, add a show all posts button, and add vertical spacing or a separator line between the menu buttons. The Cookie Muse block system supports responsive web design. In the new version of Adobe Muse, you can set the width of the block to a responsive value. Before you upload the site, make sure the PHP file is attached in the first field of the widget menu, otherwise you will receive an error. If you use multiple instances of the blog on your website in the same directory, make sure the file is added at least once. If multiple instances of the blog are used in different categories, the PHP file should be attached to every one of the instances. Now connect to your FTP host as usual and upload the site. When you open the blog page for the first time, you will see the configuration wizard. Once you upload the site, make sure that you configure the blog right away to avoid complications like visitors viewing the screen and running the wizard. Also, you can put the blog on a private page first so only you know where it is, then you can move it back to the main page. On the subsequent runs, even if you put the blog on a different page in the same directory, the configurations will remain saved on the server. On the first step of the configuration, some compatibility tests will run. If there are any problems, they will be shown here. If no problems are reported, the activation fields show up and you can activate your product license using the email address you used for the purchase and the order ID which you received in the order confirmation email from Cookie. It is important to note that you can activate your license on one domain only and it is non-transferable. I recommend to activate the blog on the server and domain on which you really want to run it later. Settings. Though these settings are really simple, it might give you additional relief to know that you can change them anytime later. So if you don't understand every option fully now, don't worry. They are changeable anytime. But let us proceed with some details. First, we have the database type. This is where your data is saved. The first and the easier option is SKU Lite, 
which is a file-based system and needs no configuration on your side. If you are a bit more advanced and would like to run a heavier website with a lot more data, you might find the SQL option more suitable. MySQL, however, needs a database and an account to be set up on the cPanel of your web server. That is what these additional fields are here for. Setting up a new database is just as easy as setting up a new email account on your server. But if you are yet unfamiliar with that procedure, we will make a separate tutorial for that. And as said, for most small and personal websites, the easier option, SKUlite, is a sufficient and hassle-free solution. Here you enter a title for your blog, and an existing email address, which will be the address of the outgoing emails. If you don't want the entire post text to be shown on the list of the posts, you can check this checkbox so a short blob will be shown instead. You can also choose the length of this text. However, if you only plan to post embedded videos and media, you may want to go without shortening as the embedded media don't show up on the short text. You have two switches for the user commenting system. Here is a general switch, and on each post you have a second switch. Needless to say, the user comment input form only shows up if both switches are on. If you generally want the users to be allowed to comment, but you occasionally want to block it on particular posts, you can set this general option checked here and uncheck the individual option on the post editor. The following visibility options should be self-explanatory. Lazy load. You definitely know the effect from almost every social media website. The posts are not loaded at once, but gradually as you scroll down. Cookie Muse blog has implemented this feature and gives you multiple options, whether you want 5, 10 or 20 posts to be loaded on each cycle, or if you want to turn it completely off. I would recommend to leave it at the default value of 5, unless there is a special case. The search engine optimization options make Cookie Muse blog really great. As you may know, all contents which are loaded dynamically by JavaScript are practically invisible to the search engines, since they normally only crawl the HTML source and not what is dynamically loaded on the top. Now our fast SEO option takes your most recent 20 posts and almost magically edits your HTML file and adds the HTML codes of the posts into your file. It automatically overwrites the files every time you make a change to your blog contents. The result is that the search engines can crawl and follow the links to your posts if you want. Also, the second SEO option is very amazing. It involves complex redirections to make sure that Google, Facebook and other crawler bots can access your site. Of course, if you want them to, by checking this option. Here you can create your admin or first author account. You can add multiple authors later if you want. However, make sure that the email address is real, since in the case you lose your password, you can only recover it using the email address which you enter here. Now you're finished with the setup and ready to log in. If you have an SSL certificate for your website, it is recommended to use the Secure SSL Login by clicking here. As mentioned before, the login functionality is secure and the block system will automatically block an account if a number of failed login attempts are registered within a certain time frame. When we log in for the first time, we need to make a category before we can start posting. We can simply make further categories, just type in the name and press enter. Also you can drag them to change the order. The order of the categories is relevant for the menu. Now I click here to make a new post. Here I enter a title 
and the content. Alternatively, I can paste the content from another source. But if you copy and paste, please make sure that you remove the formatting in order to prevent later problems. On a Mac, please press Shift, Alt, Command and V to paste and match the style. On Windows, you can paste the contents shortly in the notepad first to lose any formatting, then copy and paste from there to the blog. This is as with every other web rich text editor. You can click here if you need to access the raw HTML code, for example, to paste and embed any media such as YouTube. To upload images, simply drag and drop or choose them from the file browser. Also on mobile devices, you can directly make a photo with a camera. Accepted file types are JPEG, GIF and PNG. The tags should be separated by commas. The system will also remove the spaces between the tags. You can skip the tags if you don't want to use them, but they will help the visitors to navigate, especially if you have lots of posts. So, then we choose a category and set the commenting option and click Save. If you want to edit a post, you can do so by clicking on the cogwheel icon on the top right of each post. This icon is only visible to you as a logged in administrator. Normal users won't see that icon. The other options you have here or publish or unpublish a post, which hides it from the viewers, and delete. Users can comment on a post if you have set the options to allow them to. They also have access to deleting their own comments, for example if they notice an error, but as long as they have not closed the browser. The administrator can always remove any comments. If you have multiple authors, each of them can only delete the comments on their own posts. Only the main or the first administrator can remove them all. If you want to change the main administrator, there is an option for that in the settings. But be aware that you lose the access to the settings as soon as you change the main admin from yourself to someone else, because only the main administrator has access to the settings or can generate or remove authors. You can change the login email and name of any author within the Author section. Also, if you want to create a new author account, just type their name and email address here and a new password will be automatically sent to them. If you or any author needs to change their own password or email, they can click on the user settings. Basically we're done now. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have any questions which are not covered here, please visit the Cookie Knowledge Base. Thank you for your interest in the Cookie Muse blog, and I wish you fun with it.